guys, welcome to the Julie's World vlog. It's a little bit of a long one today, which I know some of you love and look forward to, um, because we've got Passover, Easter, and I am sharing a ton of different crafty projects this week. So uh, I think it's gonna be a good one, plus the incident with the tiny ham. Oh, and those of you who asked about last week, because I know I'm way behind on answering comments. So when we got out of the car, the, there was no bra. Um, so it must have blown off somewhere else. Anyway, that's the True Life Accounts. I hope you enjoy this week. Well, this has been an act of frustration. So I learned a lot about my sewing machine. It will maybe sew through two layers of leather, but not well, and definitely not through three. So I had to trim everything down so it fit within so that I was only ever sewing through two layers. Um, I did make this zipper pocket, which turned out cute. I did make, you know, these are divided pockets. You can see there's like stitching down here, but what a nightmare. The leather stretches. My sewing machine is angry at me. You definitely need an industrial machine, but I'm just going to relax about it and say, hey, look what a cute outside I have now. Now I just have to make all the inserts. Never doing this again, by the way. Okay, so I finished my very first, uh, I don't know what these are called, but it's like a cover for the inserts to go in my journal. I used some of the um, gelatin prints that I've been doing in here. I actually, this is my last 12 by 12 page protector that I used in here. Um, it's held together with magnets and I found that the magnets I used weren't really strong enough so I had to put them on the outside of the page protector because they just they're not strong enough to go through the page protector. So I hope it holds together, but I think it's gonna be really cute in here. So I just have to buy some more page protectors and then make like six more of these, plus the inserts. Hey, so I'm here at mom's house. We had a delicious dinner that mom cooked. Thank you, mom. And now we are having tea. It is a customary thing. I think since as long as I can remember, we always have a cup of tea after dinner, right? right. Um, I'm a big fan of, uh, Prince of Wales, Twinings, and you like many teas, but one of my favorites is Lapsang Souchong. Yeah, which is also delicious. So if you are not a tea drinker, it's a nice little after dinner treat. I read online about this method of hanging a quilt, and I thought it was kind of clever, which is you just stitch in the corners, and then you put this rod pocket, and this just can sit on a nail. So... I really like that for these small art quilts. I think it's kind of a genius way of holding it. It is 39 degrees today, and that counts as spring in New England. So we are outside for a walk. We are at Gore Estate, which is a beautiful historical estate, and they have lovely grounds. And we were just walking around and being in nature. Stop looking for food, Swan. Just bring your head up so you look pretty. The swan is against me, Steve. He doesn't want to turn around. He's shaking his butt at me on purpose. I love reflections. It's like something dancing when you look at a reflection in the water. So I'm super excited. I just checked out this website and boom. There I am. My quilt has been juried into an exhibit. It's called Lost and Found, and there is an opening reception, just so you know, on April 5th from 6 to 8. That's open from the public or to the public. So I hope you'll come. Otherwise, the exhibit is open April 3rd through May 3rd in Cambridge. Yay! I am running late. I am headed to the museum for my uh, monthly meeting as part of the steering committee on the museum council. You can see the museum is right by the park, the fens as they say, and I'm coming up on it now.
this is what the inside of my sewing machine looks like. Um, I had a bit of a thread knot, so I had to take the plate off, and then there was tons of stuff to clean out, so now I have to put it all back together, and that's always harder than taking it apart. It took me two and a half tries, shall we say, but it's back together. I did have to consult the uh, manual. It's actually, I do keep my manuals because sometimes you need them. So this is the pasta that we made last night, Steve's and mine, and I'm going to go ahead and cook it up today. It's pretty, well, it's pretty stuck together at the moment, but pretty cool how you can make all these like little ridges and yeah, make your own pasta. I'm excited. To, I hope it tastes good. So I thought I would share some recent crafty purchases. Um, I bought a ton of new embroidery floss because I'm just going through mine. So I remember when it was like 15 cents to buy embroidery floss. So paying 55 cents seems outrageous to me. And then along with new embroidery floss, I also use these floss bobbins to keep my floss really neat. So I bought some more of those. Um, my mom was with me when I went to Michael's and she said these would make great earrings. So I promised her that I would put these on earring hooks for her. And for what were these like $5 or something, you're gonna have little leather book earrings, which is a super cute idea. And then I was looking for some silver chain. So here it is. It's a little brighter than I would like, but I think it's gonna be a good thing. I fell in love with this paper. So this is a paper stack. Oh, it's still closed on the side. And sometimes I just can't resist pretty pattern paper. So this is just a beautiful set that looks to me like watercolor. So here you go. Ooh, and it's double-sided. That's my favorite. So it's like, I think, oh, not all of it's double-sided. Oh, because this is a different kind of paper. I clearly did not look through this very well. This is a heavier, sort of almost glossy paper. So that's not double-sided. And then the other stuff in the back, which is slightly thinner. This has like a canvas texture to it. Wow, this is even better than I thought it was gonna be. Hmm. I just looked through the back part and saw the double-sided paper. So this is like regular cardstock. Then this is a kind of heavier paper of some kind. And then there's this shiny stuff. And then there's this canvas texture. Maybe it even says. So it says three fabric texture designs, three pearlescent designs, two spot UV designs, and half double-sided papers. But I thought it was beautiful. I've never heard of this brand first edition paper, so I don't know. But this is a little bit about the person who made them. Um, so this is a British company, it looks like, because they're based in Nottingham. Um, no, unless that's, I don't know. Maybe it's Australia, who knows. But this is the woman Amy C, it looks like. So she says she's Australian, London-based fashion textile paint designer. So yeah, but really cool, so. I think that's neat. And then this is something I bought at the thrift store. You can see from the price tag, it cost me $4.99. Um, but it's a box. And somebody clearly clipped out this article from the New Yorker that was about the Matisse cutouts and the articles from 2014. Um, so this is one of the Matisse exhibit, I believe was at MoMA, which is actually, I saw it there. But what this is, is these are individual, um, you know, uh, prints or whatever you want to call it. Something is keeping this from flipping down nicely. Of various Matisse 
I love this one. So I might just pop some of these into a frame and have some Matisse's around me. They're just beautiful. And for $4.99, man, come on. Anyway, I could flip through these all day long. I mean, this is so simple and beautiful. I love it. I think he's a total genius. Um, and on the back, you know, it has a little bit of information about each piece. But, you know, some of these pieces from the cutouts were meant to be reproduced in books, so they reproduce really, really well. Like, it just looks beautiful and vivid. Madame de Pompadour. There's a lot of them. I mean, for $5, baby. I love my local thrift store. I always have my eye out for interesting things. But there you go. That is my wonderful haul of stuff that I've bought recently. run we went to Russo's which is a farm stand um, Trader Joe's Marty's which is a liquor store um, Whole Foods now we're just leaving stop and shop so I would say that we have everything we need to cook Passover um, dinner and eat for like the rest of our lives this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. So here is my dress that I'm wearing for Passover. You can see it's like a see-through kind of thing. It has little pockets. And I just put this little red shift underneath and rocking my Slippers. Julie is showing you the place cards she made which are, of course, Easter eggs with everybody's name on them. Absolutely gorgeous. And here is the stuffed refrigerator. And here is future matzo ball soup. big drinkers we finished one bottle of wine but um at least two bottles of diet coke so you know where our priorities are i was just doing a little bit of doodling here in my art journal to create april with some flowers i'm very interested in playing around with leaving some white space and things right now because i normally never do that so we like Catan so much and we were tired of waiting for friends to play with so we're trying this two-person version. We'll see how we like it. So far I'm mostly confused. How are you feeling about it? I feel pretty good. I'm very excited. <laughs> you think you're gonna win, don't you? Yep. I really like the shadow. I think it's cool. You can make a whole painting from that shadow. So Steve and I are heading to my mom's for Easter. We're bringing the potatoes that Steve made for last night's Passover Seder because you made like a hundred potatoes. Yep. But everybody said they were creamy and delicious. What's your secret? Uh, a lot of whipping. 
Yeah, so he pretty much left them in the mixer for like an hour. Yeah. Steve is supervising the ham operation as we He's mom supervised. tries to transfer the pineapple ring ensconced ham to the board. Ugh! I don't know, Steve may have to See, do the heavy difficult. lifting. It really doesn't need slicing, but I want to get it away from all that juice. Yeah. You want to use a spatula or something? Oh, yeah, spatulas. Here you go. Tools. It's all about tools. Oh, oh. <laughs> you want me to do it? Okay. I offered to help, that's all. It's true. You did. She's got her ways. It's her kitchen. A little ham is my project. It's bigger than I thought. You said it was the tiniest ham on earth. It's bigger than it the tiniest. It is the tiniest. You earth. never have seen a ham like this. Are you sure you don't want Steve to help? I might. Is that pineapple ring been getting in my way? It may be a brute strength issue, and he's got brute strength. It's not. It's a delicate getting it off the... the... How about if you... Okay, I'm not going to give advice. I mean, I didn't stick those damn clothes in. I I don't really know why we really need the knife. Okay. Salad dressing. I think that has to go under. Yeah, Steve's the man. Good job. One try. Don't tell her. Don't say it too loudly. Which <laughs> dressing? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to sign up for my urban sketching class in April, the 28th and the 29th. See you next week. <laughs>